Good afternoon, everybody. Chris Grandy coming back to you. Um, wanted to do a Chris Answers Quora uh, session on a topic I've discussed before, and that is uh, something to do with paying for college and how you should fund it. And the angle I've taken before is that we should be thinking about higher education for children in a completely different way than we thought about it, than we think about it now, we thought about it 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And I'll get into that to a second, but the core question I'm going to bring right up here was, uh, was a good one. It says, college costs are compounding at the same rate, about the same rate as I can expect to earn on investment returns. What he's saying is that, you know, um, college costs are going up, say, 5 7% a year. If you know, being you know a moderate conservative investor, maybe you're gonna make five. You should project five to seven percent a year return on your investments. Should a family plan to maximize financial aid? So what he's saying is, instead of trying to save for college, you should then focus on really maximizing financial aid. Now, first off, before we even get too deep into this, I want to bring up uh, the, the concept of maximizing financial aid. So this is just an aside, sort of a financial planner's um, just awareness for you. And that is that uh, when you go to some of these financial planning seminars for college to reduce college expenses, et cetera, increase financial aid, all that stuff, a lot of these have to do with making less of your money um, appear on the expected family contribution sheet. And how they typically do that is by tossing your money into life insurance policies and annuities and getting it categorized as retirement funds, or such, which are which are excluded in some ways, um, versus having them say just in savings account or investments, because in the expected family formula contribution, you know they look at your invest savings in the bank, they look at your investments that are not in retirement accounts, etc., the value of your business, um, so they don't look at retirement accounts, etc. But just gotta be careful because a lot of these expenses, a lot of these uh, products are very expensive, life insurance, annuities. You can get lower cost ones, and you know I deal with a lot of those. Um, you can get moderately co moderate cost ones. You can get a good combination if you decide to go that route. But most of the time, uh, you you know you can imagine. I'm sure I'm going to guess that a lot of these uh, seminars, the insurance products they might be pushing, are very high cost. So just be cautious first off when it comes to financial aid planning. But now this question though, Encore is asking. You know, should you plan to maximize financial aid? So maybe just you do it smartly. Let's say, well, I'm going to just do all these things to maximize financial aid. I'm going to put my money in annuities, et cetera, um, and life insurance. But what I point I want to get at is completely different. First off is that trying to save for college for a lot of people is very difficult. You know, I have some higher net worth clients, and they can just dump six figures into the college fund. It's paid for. You know, for example, some of the people that had answered this person's question said, hey, you know, you can, you know, if you're worried about inflation, you can do one of those um, state programs like Massachusetts. We have the U plan, which guarantees to lock in the cost of college. You know, you buy today's dollars. It guarantees future dollars in college. Um, so you don't have to worry about inflation. Other people have brought up, you know, hey, you know what? The formula, the financial aid formula does not take in that big of a percentage of your assets. So you should save anyway. But I will say that if you do a good job saving, you know, even a small percent of your assets, when you look at the whole formula, it can still come down to you having a pretty big college bill. You know, if you look at if they don't, let's say they only require, you know, uh, your ten thousand dollars of your savings and five thousand dollars from your income, but they require say five thousand dollars from your child's uh, savings and something else, whatever. You, know, you can still come up with an expected family contribution of twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars a year which is not chump change, um, especially, and that can easily happen, especially if the total bill on college is, is fifty to $60,000 a year. So, I mean, you're still getting $35,000 of financial aid with a $25,000 bill. So, just realize, I mean, it's, it's still there. Um, so, you know, some people are saying, you know, don't, don't, don't not save because the formula isn't that penalizing. Um, other answers, and I'm looking down at the answers here, so I'm not, don't worry, I'm not, not paying attention to you, I'm just reading the answers. Um, you know, other type of things, you know, if your child gets, uh, you know, is good in school, then don't worry about savings. You can, you know, go into certain fields where you get special scholarships like STEM type stuff, whatever. You know, I'm sure if you're, you had a daughter who was into software, there's probably a lot of, a lot of scholarships for her. Um, you know, but, you know, and then some people saying to do both. 
My point, though, is just to completely th rethink college, all right? Especially, you know, where I'm from in Boston, there's this, you know, pecking order hierarchy about what college a kid goes to. And, of course, in Boston, you know, right, you know, right next to Boston, we have Harvard, which, you know, under many uh, measurements is the number one university in the country, if not, you know, somewhere in the top three to five. Um, so we have that, and we have a few other very top-tier universities like MIT and a few um, next-tier high-level universities in the area. So you have a lot of, you know, you do have some universities that everybody knows about, but then you have this whole tier of universities which only Boston people rank, um, you know, schools you would never have heard of, but, you know, if, if there, there's something like that kind of uh, – cattiness where like if your child's going to this school versus that one you see this competition and if you were from another state you would say well I didn't even heard any of those schools but you have you know Boston area people New England area people like fighting over to oh my kid went to this school and they're paying absorbent fees and I know uh, parents who pay big money for the kids to go to uh, no-name schools and if you ever left New England no one's going to know that that school at all and so like you're getting no value for the for the name brand recognition of the school and so you know, that happens a lot too, but my whole take is on this whole thing is, is that just throw that all away, all right, throw all that away, and let's focus on getting your kid educated and learned, not what school they went to. And and the way I want you to think about it is is something that one one way to think about it or one, one technique that would give you an idea of what direction I'm heading in is something that a lot of people will have been forced to do financially over a long period of time but it's actually a great, a great total uh, step, and that is, you know, going to community college for your first two years, and then going to university that of your choice, theoretically, for the final two years. Talk about saving money. I mean, seriously, folks, imagine you're paying sixty thousand dollars a year so your kid can take English. I mean, your freshman year college liberal arts is is probably not new, not too far different from a good high school's uh, senior year program. Calculus, uh, a language. English, some kind of English type of class and some other kind of, you know, basic science or whatever to get curriculum requirements out of the way. You're talking about paying $60,000 a year for high school. So why don't you skip that? And the idea also is that, you know, so that's the first thing. So I think you're probably getting the idea where I'm heading here, that the idea of spending $250,000 of total money, even with some financial aid, taking that bill smaller, on a relatively no-name university to get a relatively useless degree is really, really going out of style fast. I mean, there are people still doing it because you know muscle memory takes over and you keep doing what we've been doing. Everybody keeps doing what what you know what we've been told to do over the over the years. But man, it's just awful, you know. And and what's happening is is it you are seeing that reverse a bit. I mean, there's a lot of people with the muscle memory still doing that, going, trying to apply to these expensive no-name schools for prestige purposes. But you are seeing that decline because what you're seeing now is you're seeing consolidation in university uh, uh, marketplace like you do in corporate. You have small universities going out of business or getting bought out by larger universities. You have, uh, you know, just getting swallowed up, et cetera. Just some schools just closing down. And... And that's there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, there, obviously, um, you know, part of it is expensive, and people want and people want to go to the best. And so, more and more people, as universities find ways to squeeze more students in, because one way you can grow your university revenue is you raise the tuition. But if that gets a little tight, maybe you let in a few more students this year, and that's another way to keep the revenue going. So the class size class sizes get bigger. Um, so I mean. You know, you have that going on, and then you, I think you're going to see further consolidation, not only with, say, community colleges being one way to save money, but you have these online courses. I mean, think about this in terms of, of, um, of people wanting, you know, to go to the best. Let's say the best math teacher for freshmen, who also is very smart, but also um, is, has, just has a great way with students. Let's say that person teaches at MIT, well, coincidentally, okay? Let's say that's the case. If you're a freshman student, are you going to pay sixty thousand a year? Let's think about this logically now. Sixty thousand a year to have the TA in your school teach calculus. It might be a good TA. I don't know. I'm not saying. Or you could take an online course for six hundred bucks and get video courses with the best, most charismatic, interesting math teacher in the country. So what we're going to have is with this online stuff, you're also going to have consolidation that way, where 
you know, the best teacher at MIT, for ex using this example, is not teaching, you know, 200 people in their freshman calculus class. They're teaching 20,000 people around the country on an online course. Where are those students coming from? Well, those students are not going to those local $60,000 universities anymore. And so you have consolidation going there. So the, the marketplace is going towards just, you know, just these, these ways where you spend less money and getting more value for your buck. So this is the part of the whole rethinking package. Forget financial aid for a second. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but just kind of forget that whole that rat race where you feel you've got to, you know, you've got to get your kid into that XYZ school because it's, it's you know, whatever, and you got to save that money. Why not get your kid educated and learn it? And, you know, and, and maybe one of these ways like online courses, community colleges. I mean, also, too, think of how many fields now. I mean, it doesn't matter what school you go to, except for a few exceptions, which I'll bring up in a second. But... It doesn't matter what school you go to. Think about it, you know, the, the most glaring example are people in software and web design, anything, you know, kind of web-based, internet-based, etc. You know, when they go for a job interview, they don't say, hey, let me see your resume or what school did you go to, which they might ask that, but they might, they'd probably say, show me what you can do. Give me an example of your work, you know, uh, show me what's what's going on, you know, or, you know, if you're going to a school or applying for a job, what, what can you do? You know, that's what they're asking. They're not asking, you know, what school did you go to? necessarily unless there's good connection there let's say it's in school at a superstar program you know the people coming out of there are top notch but i mean you know every mickey mouse program out there and not putting down any schools but really i mean a lot of these guys that can program too they're, they're kind of pretty good at it before they even get to college so uh sometimes the degree is a formality they would have learned this stuff anyway um you know maybe it makes them more rounded fine let's get more rounded for five thousand bucks instead of 60. you know um the exception to that would be, I would say, the Ivy League schools, because the advantage to them is not necessarily they have the best teachers. Uh, the advantage to them is the network you get when you uh, when you when you go to that school, and you know the prestige factor, the fact that you're uh, you know there's there's this that your uh, fellow alumni are in great places around the world, and the connections, and the fact that you know they just attract the best students. So you're going to be surrounded by a very positive. Um, a successful environment. So for the environment and the networking and connections, I would, if I go into an Ivy League school, would have the kid go there. But that whole, you know, a lot of that middle stuff, no name universities. Um, <laughs> I would seriously question the, the, I do seriously question the benefit of these, of why your $60,000 school is better than the $20,000 state school. Like what is really better? I mean, I've, you know, I've had friends who've gone to all kinds of schools, you know, uh, um, and, you know, medical schools, et cetera, that, you know, their undergrads were state schools and stuff. I mean, you really, you know, really it's, it's, um, once you get past those like top tier schools, to me, it's all just a bunch of mishmash. So, uh, that's just, what I want you to think, I want you to re completely rethink this whole education thing. Do you really need to, what are you aiming for? Is that a point? Cause what are the skills you really want your kids to learn? I mean, when I think about this, I mean, I'll summarize this as I end is like, you know, I think of my kids, what I want them to learn. Um, second language for the, you know, for the, for the skills, the mental acumen that brings and also the, you know, there's the, the global awareness of just being, you know, open-minded and also, uh, you know, uh, open-minded with their intelligence. That's key. All right. What else can they learn? As a kid, they can be playing sports and musical interest, instrument and doing art. You know, and they're kind of developing all parts of their brain. They're developing teamwork at sports, how to deal with other people. They're developing, you know, they're working on their creativity. They're working on expression. Okay, as they get a little bit older, you know, maybe they're playing chess. So they're, you know, and they start doing certain thinking games, etc. Start building up their strategic mind, their patience, which is super important, uh, which you know, I wish I had more of. You know, these are just life skills. So skills, life skills, etc. Later on, I would think like, you know, for real academic things, you want your kids to know statistics because there's so much BS uh, studies out there on everything and all kinds of ways that uh, statistics get uh, abused by amateurs and by especially journalists who don't know statistics uh, just to make a story sound good, to be able to read something and, uh, you know, say, well, this, 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 this medicine treatment works great. And if you, if you can read that statistical study and say, hey, look at the way these stats are set up here. That's not the way the data is read at all. I mean, that's a key thing to learn. Um, you know, so statistics, maybe some basic computer programs, you get the idea of that, so I should know the whole language. So why not learning skills like these? That's what's important for your kid to know. 
Um, so just think about that. Think about that next time you're talking about, you know, should my kid go to, should I be saving for financial aid? How much should I save, et cetera? Um, you know, for, for, for a lot of people, that question needs to really, you need to really slow down and think about that before you process it. So that's my, my answer on whether you should focus on financial aid or savings. Obviously focus on both. I would maybe consider having savings available for grad school, save the money on the undergrad side, but spend the money on the grad school because that's going to actually develop a career depending on the grad school. And, um, you know, and, and going forward, uh, you know, of course, financial aid, if you're making a lot of money, I just, you know, kiss that goodbye. If you're kind of in that middle range, depending on how many kids you have, maybe you think about it. But gosh, it'd be really hard to, um, really bad advice, I think, to say don't save any money uh, to try to get financial aid. I mean, definitely max out retirement accounts, et cetera. They're, they're not counted on the formula, according to the sheet I'm looking at for 2021. So, you know, definitely do that and save as much as you can in retirement accounts, pay down your, you know, pay down your debt. Be finan the most important thing you can be for your kids later on is financially solvent so you can be there to help them. All right. It doesn't do them do them any good if you save for college and you're broke. You know, that's just not gonna work. So think about these things. You know, think about college, think about getting your kid educated and learned versus just getting to college. And there's my answer. Have any comments on that? Please leave them below. But thanks for watching. Chris, ChrisGrandy.com, planwithchris.com, Walnut Hill Advisors, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Definitely leave your comments. Love to have some discussion with you. Have good questions you can bring up to discuss this further. Let me know. If you like the video, like it. If you have any critiques, bring put those down below. And subscribe if you like to like these type of videos and, and want to hear more. Have a great day.